Okay, so this rich uncle example we just saw, this is giving us a function called an exponential equation. Okay, as I was just saying, where in the, that case, A was $3 and our B was 2. Um, but more generally, anything of the form A, B to the X is an exponential function. Um, ours was the doubling function since the base was 2. But in general, exponential functions can be identified by the variable in the exponent. And it doesn't have to just be plain old x in the exponent. It can be 2x or x plus 7 or any other expression with x's in it. But we have a number as the base and the variable as the exponent. That's really what we're looking for, a number as a base and the variable in the exponent. Now, you may recall from um, earlier math course that linear functions, so lines, our functions are, or represent situations, I should say, with a constant rate of change, right? We had that constant slope, the rise over the run, right? So the, the, the change in the y values were always consistently increasing at a constant or decreasing at a constant rate. For exponential functions, it's not going to be a constant rate of change, but instead it's going to be a constant percentage rate, okay? So like in the last example, we were increasing the amount of money we had by 100% every day, okay? Um, so, right, so this, for exponential functions, this a, b to the x, so this b value is going to be related to this, this constant percentage rate, this percentage of the rate of change. So b is related to this percentage, right? So just like when you had linear functions, um, you knew you had your like y equals mx plus b, and you knew m was your constant slope, that it was your constant rate of change. For our exponential functions, this b value is related to per the percentage of the rate of change. Now, it's not the rate of change. In, in fact, it ha happens to be 1 plus the rate of change. So we're going to talk more about our, um, this percentage um, in Chapter 5. We'll see a little bit of it now. So R is that percentage. We write it as a decimal. So if I was, if I had like a constant percentage of like 5%, I would write that as 0 0.05 because that's 5 out of 100. 5 divided by 100 is 0 0.05. Um, so, but for this example, for our, our, our rich uncle example, the percentage rate was 100% because we were taking the full amount, the full amount of money we had. We started with $3 and we got the full 100% of it. We earned that constant percentage. So we earned 100% every time. If we want to write 100% as a decimal, it would just be 1, 1 1.0. So our base in the rich uncle example was 1 plus 1 or 2, right? So that was our doubling function. The value A, as we saw at the end of that last video, um, that's telling you that starting value, right? We started with $3, or if we started with $50, that's going to be the y-intercept, right? Because that's what's happening when time is zero. When we started at zero, um, we were at $3, right? And then the values continued to go up, okay? So in general, though, unlike in the rich uncle example, in general, we don't need to have x be just time, so not always time, right? In the rich uncle example it was because it was like number of days, so we were only talking about positive values. But in general, we can let x be anything we want. Um, so in other words, the domain for exponential functions, so that's the set of all x values you can have on a function, um, that's going to be all real numbers, okay? So that's um, what the domain of an exponential function is. So let's use this rich uncle example, but think about what would happen, what would it mean to have negative x values? So we saw from um, the rich uncle example that we're multiplying by 2 to get from one value to the next, right? So if I had to imagine working backwards, I need to come up with a number here that when I multiply it by 2, I get 3, right? So I'm, I have to think of some number that when I multiply it by 2, I get 3, right? So think about algebraically. How would I solve for this missing box? Well, I would just divide both sides of this equation by 2, and so that missing value must be 3 halves, right? So in order to make this pattern true, this 3 halves is the number that when I multiply it by 2, I get to 3. Okay, the other way of thinking about it is if I'm moving backwards on this table, I would just be dividing by 2. So if I took 3 halves and divide it by 2, that should be the value for um, that goes in the chart here, right? So because 3 fourths multiplied by 2 gives me 3 halves. So if I'm moving down this chart, I would be multiplying by 2. If I move up, the pattern would be dividing by 2. So dividing by another 2, I get 3 eighths here, or 3 sixteenths, right? So if I imagine plotting these points, this is not my most straight values here. We, we had the, the value 0, 3 from before, right? That was our y-intercept. 
And then we already had some of these positive values, like 1, 6, 2, 12. And pretty quickly, I would be like way up here. It goes very fast, increases up very fast. Pretend I actually connect those lines. But what's happening to the left here is, uh, so 3 halves is uh, about like 1 and a half. Then I'm down to 3 fourths. Then I'm like half of that, 3 eighths, and then 3 sixteenths. So my numbers are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And the, as the next question asks, will they ever equal zero? So could you continue to divide by two somehow and get to zero? Um, and the answer is no. You Each value, the values will get closer and closer to zero, but never zero. Right? You can't divide by some number and end up with zero. Right? Okay, so lastly about, this is again about this order of operations. I really want to hammer this in with you guys, that this function, this exponential function, 3 times 2 to the x, this rich uncle example, this is not the same function as 6 to the x. So there's two ways of thinking about this. I mean, by one way is um, order of operations, right? We know order of operations says to do exponents, then multiplication, right? So we... We would raise the 2 to the x power, then multiply by 3. That's not 6 to the x. But even just think about it in terms of this rich uncle example. Um, this is a scenario where, where we're doubling our money every day, right? Starting with $3 and we're doubling our money. This one would be like starting with $1, right? There's a sort of uh, factor of 1 hiding there. And we are multiplying the, our money by 6 every time. So this one's going to grow much, 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 much more rapidly, right? So if we had a rich uncle, we would love it if he would give us the function 6 to the x instead of 2 times 3 to the x. But that's not, they're not the same. Certainly they're not the same.